The following lesson is linked to learning outcome 2, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning. Learners should be able to describe plot, subplot, character portrayal, conflict and dramatic purpose. Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Romeo and Juliet. I hope you've got the notes from your group discussion with you, because in this lesson, we will carefully examine the lines in the prologue. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to analyze how the plot of Romeo and Juliet works in terms of cause and effect. Remember, when we discuss plot, we look at what happens and also why it happens, the cause and effect. One incident develops out of another or adds to another. This builds up a feeling of excitement and tension in the audience. Let's take another look at the prologue spoken at the beginning of the play. Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured, piteous overthrows doth with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end naught could remove, is now the two hours' traffic of our stage, the which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. Well, that's the whole story of the play, told to you before anything else happens. If we examine the lines carefully, we shall know the story of the play. Let's look at what we have been told. There are two households or families, both alike, in dignity. In other words, they are equally respectable and have the same status in the city. We learn later that the one family is called Capulet and the other Montague. And which city are we talking about? Ah, it is Verona, a city in the north of Italy. What do we learn about these two families that live in Verona? They have an ancient grudge. That is a very old fight that has gone on for many generations. And as part of this fight, there is new mutiny. That is further violence and bloodshed. This bloodshed makes the hands of the citizens unclean. The violence corrupts the people who live in Verona. Not a very happy situation for our hero and heroine who make their appearance now. The children, that's Romeo and Juliet, who are born into these two families, are destined to fall in love and die young because they are trapped by the violent hatred of their families. So, what else does the prologue tell us about the play? You will see they death-marked love. 
and also the rage or the anger and fury of their parents. Also, we are told that the play lasts about two hours, as you see here, two hours traffic of our stage. We are certainly being promised an amazing afternoon or evening's entertainment. Love, anger, violence, killing, passion, and young people dying. Will you stay to watch? I think so. But why should Shakespeare tell us the whole story and risk our going home, feeling that we know what's going to happen anyway? Our interest in the play is in much more than knowing what happens. We want to see how everything happens and why things happen. This is why we say that plot is more than just the story. Now that we know what happens, we need to look more carefully at how and why things happen. We know that there are two children, Juliet Capulet and Romeo Montague. How do they meet? Juliet's father decides to hold a party. Romeo and his friends find out about the party and decide to go. At the party, Romeo sees Juliet and manages to speak to her. They fall in love. Later that evening, Romeo climbs over the garden wall and speaks to Juliet. They exchange vows. They promise each other that they are truly in love. And Romeo makes plans to marry Juliet the next day. So, we can see the causes of what happens and the effect of one event on another. Because Romeo decides to go to the party, he meets Juliet. He doesn't know who she is, but he decides to speak to her. And the effect of that is that Juliet falls in love with him. Romeo climbs the garden wall and speaks to Juliet. As a result of that, they exchange their vows of love. Shakespeare's plays are divided into five acts. The climax usually occurs near the end of the third act. Shakespeare plans his plays so there is a development towards a crisis in Act 3 and another climax in Act 5. Here are the main events of Acts 1 to 3. They have been put in the wrong order. Read them carefully and then we shall put them in order so that the events build towards a crisis. Friar Lawrence agrees to marry Romeo and Juliet, hoping that this might end the feud. Mercutio fights Tybalt. There is fighting in the streets of Verona and the prince threatens the next person who breaks the peace with death. Tybalt insults Romeo. Romeo and his friends decide to go to the Capulet's party. Mercutio is fatally wounded. Romeo and Juliet are married. Romeo and Juliet fall in love. Lady Capulet tells her daughter Juliet that Paris wants to marry her. Romeo refuses to fight Tybalt. Romeo revenges Mercutio's death and kills Tybalt. That was obviously not properly arranged. Let's put the events in the right order. What happens in the first scene of the play? Yes, the servants quarrel. So, the first sentence must be, there is fighting in the streets of Verona and the prince threatens the next person who breaks the peace with death. Then what happens? Yes, the party. So, let's take the sentences about the party and put them in the right order. First, Lady Capulet tells Juliet about Paris wanting to marry her. Then, of course, Romeo and his friends decide to go to the Capulet's party and it is there that they fall in love. What does Romeo do after he has promised to marry Juliet? Yes, he goes to speak to Friar Lawrence. So, our next sentence must be Friar Lawrence agrees to marry Romeo and Juliet, hoping that this might end the feud. 
So Friar Lawrence marries Romeo and Juliet secretly. Romeo comes back from the marriage ceremony and bumps into Tybalt and Mercutio. Let's look at those sentences. Mercutio fights Tybalt. Tybalt insults Romeo. Mercutio is fatally wounded. Romeo refuses to fight Tybalt. Romeo revenges Mercutio's death and kills Tybalt. Let's order them. First, Tybalt insults Romeo, but Romeo refuses to fight. He's now related to Tybalt after all. Mercutio is furious, so he fights Tybalt instead and is wounded and dies. Romeo feels guilty and so he fights Tybalt and kills him. Let us read all the sentences together to get the plot of the first three acts and to see the crisis that Shakespeare has created. There is fighting in the streets of Verona and the prince threatens the next person who breaks the peace with death. Lady Capulet tells her daughter Juliet that Paris wants to marry her. Romeo and his friends decide to go to the Capulet's party. Romeo and Juliet fall in love. Friar Lawrence agrees to marry Romeo and Juliet, hoping that this might end the feud. Romeo and Juliet are married. Tybalt insults Romeo. Romeo refuses to fight Tybalt. Mercutio fights Tybalt. Mercutio is fatally wounded. Romeo revenges Mercutio's death and kills Tybalt. How well did you manage that exercise? You need to know the sequence of events in the play and you need to understand the reasons for what happens in the story. Are you able to see cause and effect? Can you describe why one thing happens after something else has happened? Here's a task for you to try. Explain why Benvolio persuades Romeo to go to the party. Does Romeo have a different motive? We all agree that Romeo goes to the party, but Benvolio and Romeo have different reasons for deciding on this course of action. Can you say what they are? Thank you for joining me. Goodbye.